This is it. This is it. This is it. <laughs> what is this is it? This is the last camping trip for quite some time. About five weeks. We are headed to Curry Hammock State Park. This is a drive I'm not looking forward to. Me neither. So we have to get down to the Keys. And I'm Joe. And we are two, two crazy, crazy campers. campers. After losing a combined weight of more than 200 pounds, we realized we had so much more energy for activities. Come along with us as we explore the great outdoors. And join us on a brand new adventure. So yeah, this is an adventure. We are heading down to Curry Hammock State Park in the Keys. Now, if you want to go camping on the water and in the Keys, this is the place to go. But if you're Joe and you don't like traffic, and you don't like roads where it's one road in and one road out, maybe it's not for you. I'm not a Keys person because I just, I have like this thing, and I'm sure it's an thing. irrational fear that there is going to be an accident on the only road that goes in and out. Maybe it comes from watching that Arnold Schwarzenegger movie True way lies? too many times. Yes, right, where they blow up the bridge I don't know. Well, I want to be able to dance like Jamie Lee Curtis. I'll, I'm just going to put that out there. <laughs> so we're going to head down to Curry Hammock State Park. Uh, but what I said about going to the Keys, this park is just $26 a night to stay in Marathon. And the sights are right on the water. So we're really excited about this. It's about a three hour drive going down there. We're going to be there for a few days. And of course, we're going to give you a five things review of Curry Hammock State Park. Not a bad view. What do you think? I think I'm in love. <laughs> this is like really nice. It is very windy out though. Extremely windy. There goes our door. We're going to have to close that up. You're not going to be able to leave the door open right now. No, I'm actually not even going to set up like our mats and chairs and all that. We're just going to enjoy the breeze and the view tonight. Where's the beach? I'm looking for the beach. We gotta go that way. Yeah, because you can't just cut through the dunes. You need to actually find the entrance. I actually like that, the fact that there's like a dune separating us. It helps a little bit with the wind and you also don't have to worry about any like water or anything coming up like that. Yes. I found it. Here's the beach. <laughs> Welcome to Florida. When it's hot out, it rains every single day. So is this what we do on a rainy day? We get work done. So we drive three hours to the Keys to sit on the beach and we're working. Yeah, but you don't have this view. I don't know if you can see this. In my sea shed. It looks like it's stopping raining. Yes. Maybe we can like go do something. We had a bunch of plans. I mean, our plan was to drive like down to a big pine key, right? And check out a couple more campgrounds. So here's the thing about RVing. Okay. Especially for the weekend warrior like us. Okay. Our ultimate goal is to relax. That is very true. And to enjoy some time together. So even if our plans go sideways, we're okay because we're together and we're relaxed. You know what I know? I'm really relaxed about. We're not sitting in a tent right now getting really wet. I know. I We've got some pop-up <laughs> campers around us and I just want to be like, come on and in. come inside. So yeah, we came down here. I brought my drone. This is the Autel Evo 2 Pro. And I was really excited about pulling over somewhere, getting a bunch of drone footage. Yesterday, it was so windy. It was like 25 so mile an hour winds. And though this drone can handle the heavy winds, I tried to launch it at one point and it was like, bah! and I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to risk that. Not with so our baby. Today... It's not windy at all, and it starts raining. So I'm really hoping the rain just goes away, we get some sun, and then we can take this. We'll go to like the edge of one of the bridges and mm -hmm. get some really nice drone footage of maybe the boats, things going out, maybe part of the island. Because you're not allowed to launch a drone from within a state park. I can go outside of the state park and then fly over it, but you're not allowed to launch it inside of the state park. 
So we took a ride down to Bahia Onda State Park to check out the campgrounds and see if we want to go there, and it's gorgeous. And we figured, hey, we're only 30 more miles away from Key West, so why not just keep going? Yeah, it's like one of those things, like, I never had any desire to go to Key West because it's like a four-hour drive from our house. But now you're like, it's almost there. It's, we talk about it on our YouTube channel for keto, we're like, good enough. And like, I feel like we couldn't just say good enough like when we're so close to Key West. So we are in line to see the southernmost buoy and we're in front of the southernmost, southernmost house. They're the, gotta be the most hospitable people in here. Yeah, but the only problem is we're not in the south. We're in, in, in Key West, that, that's super south. No, we're not in the south. If you wanna go to the south, you have to go up to Jacksonville. Oh. Right, like you gotta go, we're, we're down north. You gotta go up south because nobody that's down here is from down here. You're probably one of the only people in Key West right now that is actually from Florida. I should put on a sandwich board sign and just stand out there and just like pass myself off as a tourist exhibit because there's a lot of those things here. You are a seventh generation Floridian. <laughs> I rarely ever say this because I miss my kids when we're on a trip, but I don't want to go home today. I really don't want to go home. One more day. One more. I really, if I didn't have a lacrosse game, I would be sitting on this beach literally till one o'clock. I got to sit up high on this one. Why? Because you're going to be like, yeah, way taller than me because I'm at an incline. My butt's getting wet. <laughs> Sorry. We're sitting in the water because like, how do you do a video on a campground in the Keys without sitting in the water? Yeah, so our camera's in the water and we better not move it too much. Yeah, so we're gonna move us. So I need you to like, there you go. Hello. So it is nine o'clock in the morning. Yeah. There's not a perfect sun for this. So the sun is over there. Full we sun. had to wait for it to come up a little bit. So there's gonna be some shadows on this side of our face, but we can't go that way. Yeah, I do have another side of my face. Yeah, so. I'm not too faced though. <laughs> Time for the five things review. So if you are new to our channel, we review all campgrounds based on five things, and they are hospitality, amenities, the campsites themselves, stuff to do, and finally, would we recommend it? Okay, so let's start off with hospitality. So hospitality, if you're new to our channel, has to do with the staff, um, the volunteers who are here, and uh, just in general, like how friendly are all of the campers around? And I have to tell you, I mean, we've been to a lot of state parks. We do most of our camping at state parks. Yes, we do. I was more impressed with the hospitality here than any other campground. Just a charming folks here to greet you. Mm -hmm. Very knowledgeable. Asked us if this was our first time, uh -huh. which I thought was great. Gave us maps. Gave us lots of maps. Told us where lots of fun stuff, you know, are. And I just, I felt welcomed. Yeah. Now, one of the things that really impressed me was we were coming to the Keys. And now we're coming from the Fort Lauderdale area. So it's only about a two and a half hour drive, but of course, every time you're towing a rig, you figure you gotta add on like a half hour to an hour. And then Miami traffic and Keys traffic is unpredictable. Yes. Hence why I'm always fearful to come down here because it's unpredictable and I'm always on a schedule. So we were leaving right after church and I figured, okay, we're gonna leave at around two o'clock, but of course things get messed up. So we weren't getting out till 2.30. So I called the ranger and said, I don't know if we are gonna get there by the time you close. And she's like, I'm gonna stay an extra half hour for you because yesterday- Can you believe that? She said to us, the traffic down through the Keys was 10 miles an hour for several miles. So again, it's unpredictable. So she's like, I'm gonna stay an extra half hour for you, but, in case I'm gone when you get here, here's the code you can pull in because again, the campground is right behind a gate. So there's actually two gates if the park is closed, one at the park and then one into the campground. And she's like, in there in the morning, just come, come on up and I'll give you your parking pass and everything else. So like, I loved that. The yeah. fact that I wasn't worried that we were gonna hit some traffic and maybe not get in here till six, seven, eight o'clock at night. And then have to sleep in the street. Yeah. So number two, the amenities. And the amenities has to do with just all of the different facilities here. So like the bathrooms, which are super clean. Yeah, there's some really cool bathrooms here because they're actually a two level. And on the bottom level, you have an outdoor shower, which is really nice to rinse off from being in the beach. Cause you know, sand is on everything here. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and then there's also a cleaning table like camp sink, which is very, very nice too if you've caught some fish but you don't want to be gutting it inside of your rig. No. I like that. And then you go to the next level up and not only are there beautiful views, but there's like a little mobile lending library if you'd like to take a book or leave a book. And there are also nice bathrooms with really beautiful clean showers. Now. Uh, there are no laundry facilities here at Curry Hammock State Park. Some of the state parks do have laundry facilities. There are none here. We also have our own private like beach entrance. So Curry Hammock yes. kind of got its own little island area. Feels so so right in the middle of the campgrounds, there is a walkway through along with a warning flag to let you know like what the surf conditions are. And you can walk right through there to bring your tables, bring your little chairs like we do, maybe bring your floats, even bring your kayak or your paddleboard or anything like that. Uh, now there's a dune that separates the waterfront sites. So your, your site isn't right on the water, there is a dune. Uh, and so you can't cross the dune to get to the water, but if you have one of the side sites, a lot of the side sites kind of have their own little walkway leaving from their campground out here to the beach. So that is really nice. There's also a like little walkway pier area yes. where if you're not here in the campground, you can go down there and launch your canoe and your kayak and things like that. And there's also picnic benches. Oh my goodness, I love, there's so many picnic benches all along the shoreline, very close to the water's edge so that you feel like you're dining at a very expensive on the water restaurant. I really just feel very ritzy here. We would never be able to afford in a hotel or resort setting, right. the level of privacy and the beauty and the views and how much of a waterfront spot you are on. Yeah. All of this private access, it, it feels very glamorous. I mean, think about generally coming down here to the Keys, you're looking at two, three, four hundred dollars a night Easily. for a hotel. So to be able to come here to Curry Hammock State Park and spend just thirty dollars a night to park your RV or even pitch a tent, there are some people here with tents. Yeah. And have this beautiful private, quiet access, it's amazing. Now, one other thing we do have on amenities is your Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. Now, we do have service with all three companies, with AT&T, Verizon, as well as T-Mobile, who's our actual mobile carrier, and there is service on all three. Uh, now, we did find at night, uh, yeah. It was a little spotty when it came to downloading and streaming some movies. Now, we didn't have any kind of buffering or anything like that, but if you were trying to stream in high definition, like we have iTunes, iTunes didn't want to load the movies on no. our Apple TV because you can't control like the streaming quality, which you can with Netflix. And I think that the reason we were having some issues is just because everybody's now in their rig and they're all trying to stream movies at the same time at night. But during the day, we had no problems. I was able to upload movies. Um, I had about a 30 uh, download speed and about a 15 to 20 upload, which is really phenomenal. So no issues. But if you do have... Uh, some kind of like a Wi-Fi antenna or a cellular booster like the Wii Boost like we have, uh, I would definitely put that up. It'll definitely help you out, especially at nighttime. But you also may want to bring some DVDs yep. with you. And then also, if you haven't gotten Netflix, maybe try Netflix because we didn't have any problem with Netflix. Yeah, because we have the Netflix set on the lowest quality and that's more to um, preserve the amount of internet that we're using. So you can set it on 480 and be using like a quarter of the amount of bandwidth that you would use if you're streaming high definition. Yeah. And that just helps us save the amount of internet that we're using. Uh, so number three, the campsites themselves. Let's go ahead and play right here uh, the walkthrough of all the campsites because there's not a lot of them.
So as you can see, this little island feels very exclusive. Yes. There are not a lot of campsites, and now we realize more than ever why it was so hard to get into here. Yeah, it is. it does take up to a year to find a spot in here, and what you're gonna have to do if you wanna come here is just constantly be checking and checking and checking and checking. I do wanna say, though, that when a site opens up, it kind of fills up very quickly. So I would try to plan this far in advance if you can. Yeah. Like I was even looking for our next time coming up here and there were some spots for like later on at the end of the summer, but for the next four months, completely booked up because I know we keep saying this at every state park we go to, but the campsites are really nice here. I'm not gonna say these are my favorite though. Yeah. Because it depends on the kind of camping you wanna do. It does. So if you're like me who grew up in the mountains of New York, I would go camping. We lived on Long Island, but every weekend we went up to the Catskill. So I'm for me, camping was in the woods, like not being full exposure to the sun. This feels like- You're a, not gonna get that here. No, this feels like a day at the beach and then you went ahead and slept there. But, <laughs> As opposed to some of the other campgrounds, especially like the Thousand Trails parks that are down yes. here, there is a good amount of separation between you and your neighbors. You really don't see your neighbors. Now you can if you want to, but there's something. You're, you don't feel like you're in a parking lot. Right. There's just no overhead coverage. Because we did see um, some RV parks and they felt like a Walmart parking lot. Yeah. It was, there was no, there wasn't even like a lot of water access yeah. for the amount of rigs that were in those places. Yeah, and for me, that's not camping. I want to have a little bit of privacy. I want yeah. to be able to see people when I want to see people, but not see people when yeah. I don't want to. Does that make sense? I mean, you're going, I want to get away. So to me, this was perfect because the sites are all nice. They're big. Uh, they do not have sewer hookup, but they do have electric. You have 30 and 50 amp. And there's a dump station. Everything is on gravel and everything is level. I mean, we pulled in, we didn't have to do any leveling. We were perfectly level from right to left. All we had to do was raise up the tongue after we disconnected and that wasn't even much. So I think the campsites are really nice and there's honestly not a bad campsite. Some of them are a little bit longer than others. So the one that we're at, um, it fits our rig no problem, but it's not quite as wide. Right. And then there's other ones that are much deeper. For the most part, the ones that aren't on the water. The ones that are on the water are a little bit smaller, but the ones that are kind of down the side and around the front, you know, we actually saw less junk, more journey here while we were here. And they've got a giant 42 foot solitude and they fit in there no problem and had room for their bikes, a place off to the side. And that was like a corner lot. So you're gonna have to kind of look on the map and see like how big are you and how much space do you need? Well, and you also need to pack proper shoes because it is a gravel, you know, area. Mm -hmm. And you will bring all of that gravel in with you depending on what shoes. Like I had to- I would not suggest this yes. because the gravel, I love these, but the Crocs, by the way, I used to hate Crocs. Um, what happens is, is the gravel kind of comes up inside and then it's like, extra cleaning. It, it's not it's not very comfortable as you walk. So Rachel's got perfect shoes. We'll actually put these down below. I'll link for them. We got them off of Amazon and they were dirt cheap, like six bucks. Very cheap. And that way, I mean, and I really recommend that kind of thing for the kids too, mm -hmm. because the terrain changes. Yeah. You know, when you're at the beach and you've got like really firm sand and then you've got like the mushy sand that no one wants to step in and this way it won't bother them. Well, let's move on to number four stuff to do. Now we also have a video on, is it worth coming to the Keys? So I don't want to spoil too much, but coming here to Curry Hammock State Park, I would say there is a lot of stuff to do. So if you don't even want to spend money, which we're, we're kind cheap. of, we're frugal. We're not yeah. cheap. We're frugal, right? Like there's a difference between frugal and cheap. Let us know down below. Are you frugal? Are you cheap? Or are you just like, I'm on vacation, so I don't care how much money I spend. Let's do this. Let us know. Uh, so Let's first talk about if you want to be frugal like us. Maybe bring your own kayak, bring your own paddle board. Lots of things to do. You can launch it right here at the walkthrough from the campsite. There is a little beach area down there. You can bike. You can bike. 
you uh, there's a playground for the kids. There is a playground with restrooms, which is really nice. And also, I would bring your own dip net because there's lots of little crabs and fishies to to just scoop up in dip nets. There's also tons of beaches to walk on. I mean, Rachel got up every single morning and walked five miles down the beach and around the campground. Beautiful. You're not worrying like you are when you're in a lake that you're going to run into an alligator or a snake or something like yeah. that. So it's it's kind of a little bit more free to do stuff in the early morning and get to watch the sunrise and be in the water. So I had my feet in the water in the dark and I wasn't worried about something getting me. Right. Now, moving outside of Curry Hammock State Park, there's even more to do. Ooh, yeah. If you do want to spend some money, you can go parasailing. Uh, you can rent jet skis. You can go on boat rides. There's, There's the places aquarium. you can rent boats. There's aquariums. There are also just a little bit further down, about 15 minutes south, there is a place where you can go deep sea fishing. It's just $59 That's for a half a day. Cheap. We're actually planning that on our next trip. Um, you are almost halfway to Key West. I really enjoy having a home base when I travel and feeling like I can go 30 or 40 miles in any direction on, you know, a day and see the sights there and then be able to retreat back at home. I enjoy that. Yeah, I really think that this particular park is perfect if you're like that. So, you know, there are restaurants in the area, there's things to do, but you're within 20 miles. Also, um, at every bridge, there's a pull-off area with even more beaches that you can jump yes. onto where you can actually walk the bridge and go fishing off of the bridge. So make sure you bring your fishing poles too. There's just so, I can't even name the amount of things there are to do here. There's also cool areas for drones. Like you can't launch the drone here in the state park, but right. talk about breathtaking, beautiful views. Yeah, are... we were able to pull over Oof. right at one of the bridges and just launch the drone and get some incredible footage. Gorgeous. And we just had a great time and, I, and like we're are super excited. It's amazing that in 26 years, I've never been to the Keys and we're already planning two more trips this year because we're just in love with it. But definitely the RV is helping that situation out a little bit. It definitely is because no matter how hot it is outside, it's nice and cool and comfortable in our RV. Yep. So finally, number five, would we recommend it? And I think you can definitely guess here. Yes. I definitely recommend this area versus going all the way down to Key West. I mean, you can still visit different keys and, and then retreat back to a very quiet, private area if mm -hmm. that's what you enjoy. You know, I don't necessarily need to sleep in the middle of all of the excitement and festivity. Some people like to be, you know, a part of the action. So it's like visiting Manhattan and you want to be like there in, in Manhattan, you know, versus be just outside of the city area to get a, right. you know, less expensive hotel. Yeah, we are weekend warrior, pretty much empty nesters at this point. But, you know, we went down to Key West yesterday and we got to say we did it. We did it. We took our picture on the southernmost point buoy. But I don't feel the need to ever go there again. It, it, for me, it was overpriced. It was lots of gift shops all selling the same stuff. It was restaurants selling overpriced food that didn't scream Florida to me. Yeah. And I feel like there are so many other things you can do on the way down. So that's why coming here, I definitely recommend coming here or going to Bahia Anda, or you can even go a little bit further north to John Pennekamp. Stay there. And then if you want to do the Key West trip, you know, take an hour drive south, hit it for a day, say that you wanted to be, you know, that you were there, and then kind of go back to enjoying a vacation. Now, maybe you enjoy Key West. For yeah. us, we're just not into the drinking and the bar hopping and stuff. And it's also not super kid friendly down there. No, it isn't. And it feels a little bit dangerous in the streets just because they're so narrow and you have a lot of tourist traffic. And I feel like tourist traffic is the most dangerous traffic because nobody knows where they're going. They're right in the middle of a fight with their partner over like, where are we supposed to go? There's not a lot of places to park. Right. You know, so all of that contributes to being a little bit scary for kids just walking around. You know, here, you can let the kids run down the beach and you're not worried about them as now, much. two things I am going to say if you choose to come to any of the state parks here in the Keys is number one, 
be prepared for weather. South Florida weather in particular changes at a moment's notice. There's a saying, if you don't like the weather, wait, wait a minute. Minutes. <laughs> because it is, it you never know. You're going to have a beautiful thing like this, and then within 10 minutes, the clouds roll in, the skies open up, last for about 30 minutes, and then you're going to look and be like, it never rained except for now it's super steamy. Yeah. Also, the mosquitoes. Like, we're here in February, which is traditionally not mosquito season. But you are here on the water. You do have the marsh area. So if there is no wind, you do have mosquitoes. So make sure you're bringing some kind of mosquito treatment. We actually have one that we found that we absolutely love. It's called Sawyer. We will leave a link for it down below. You can get it on Amazon. We actually found it at Bass Pro Shops. We'll buy it on Amazon because yeah. it's much cheaper, cheaper there. And also bring something <laughs> to protect your, yourself from the sun, whether it be sunscreen or sun clothes. Uh, but just be aware that being here on the water, that sun is much brighter and does much more damage than you think it does. And yeah. you don't even realize it. We sat out here for like 20 minutes the other day and all of a sudden we were red and we're South Floridians and I work outside. So we're used to that kind of stuff. Yeah, I would definitely, no matter whether it is sunny or not, bring a jacket, bring like a blanket type thing or a towel so that you know, if you start to get burnt, you don't have to shut down your day. Mm -hmm. You know, put something where you can put some long sleeves on it and just stop it from like hitting that same area all day long where your bathing suit is. Yeah, because there are some like SPF kind of clothing, like Columbia makes some great, like very super lightweight long sleeve shirts and things like that. Just stuff that will stop the sun from being through, but doesn't make you feel like, oh my gosh, it's a hundred degrees outside and why am I wearing a long sleeve shirt? Also, watch out for jellyfish. Yes. They are beautiful and and cute and every kid is gonna want to touch them because they because actually, they're blue and they float oh my goodness or they're clear and they look like all of the slime things you know mm. that we've been playing with with kids so yeah they they're gonna sting them and that's gonna hurt and and not be fun they're not a toy yeah well that is gonna be our review of curry hammock state park let us know down in the comment section if you have ever been here also let us know of any other state parks that you would like us to review and visit because we're trying to get them all and <laughs> The problem is, is we keep finding new ones and we're like, we're in love. So we want to go back there, but there's a lot more state parks we need to visit still. There are. So please do us a favor. Hit that like button down below. It really does help build the channel and also make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to click the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time. Happy, happy camping. camping.